Welcome to Make Your Mark podcast, where guests share their experiences, insights, and tactics to help you accelerate your business. So building, scaling, and monetizing your business is made easier. And I will be your host, Kay Suthar. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Make Your Mark podcast. Now I have a really, really interesting topic that we're going to be discussing with our guest today. His name is Nikki. Now he believes business is not a numbers game, right? It's all about the people. It's a people's game. And that's what life is all about as well. And so he helps entrepreneurs scale their businesses by seven to nine figures, helping experts become branded, thought leaders, and scaling their practices to half a million to two million dollars. And in fact, today we're going to be discussing how to add one or two zeros to your income using thought leadership. And I'm super, super excited. Nikki, thank you for coming on to the show. It's such an honor to be here. God bless you for having me on, Kate. You are the best. (laughs) You are awesome as well. Oh, my goodness. So, Nikki, before we get into the nitty gritty of how you help your clients and really the strategies that you use to build their businesses, tell us a little bit about you and what your journey was like, because we all know Things like this and building a business doesn't happen with a click of a finger. So tell us a little bit about your journey and how this all came about for you. Okay, it's such a great question. So I'm actually originally an immigrant from the Middle East. I'm a Christian from Iran. When I was a little boy, the mm-hmm. Islamic Revolution took place in Iran and it turned my world upside down. Oh, wow. My late father, God re- his soul. He could see the writing on the wall. This wasn't going to be a great place to raise his Christian family. Mm. You know, there was a lot of like uh, government sanctioned discrimination that was happening, very overt. So he made a plan. He packed us up, got us out of, out of Iran, and we settled in Canada where I now live. Oh, wow. Now, I was 11 years old at the time. And, you know, at 11, leaving my friends, you you know you you yes. you and I we we look like I mean you're in the UK I'm in Canada but we look like we're both from children of the East right right we're 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 we're, we're we we you know what it's like to 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 have in your family line I'm sure you've seen what it's like to have had to leave a place that you were from and come to a new place it's exciting but it's also got its sadnesses associated with it as well and that's kind of where I was at and. But I look back now, it was the greatest thing my father could have done for us. It changed the legacy of our family and our history. We moved from a place where we were living under tyranny. We, we came to a place where we were living in relative freedom. So it's really, really great. Oh, and man. I believe very much that we're very grateful to get to live in places like the UK and Canada and right. be able to speak what we want to speak out there in in the world uh so my father he was an entrepreneur he was an uplifter of human beings if he knew you and you were um you know looking for work he would make phone calls till he got your job if he knew you and you were looking to start a business he would meet with you and help you get going even get you access to capital and if he knew you and you were trying to buy a car a house an apartment dad would top you up if you didn't have enough money so you could buy that car that house so that wow who does that well the late great napoleon Ballou, for one but a man who cared about his fellow man and woman and i wanted to be like my father i'm sure you can relate right you wanted to be like the people in your life that that set a good example And, and and my dad um my dad is somebody who did that and so I got into business I wanted to help people uplift people and I got into the helping profession so in my business I help entrepreneurs as you said out of zero or two to their income here's what I noticed when I got into business there's a lot of good people in business but they don't necessarily have um you know a lot of business knowledge you know what I mean they have they know they're good at what they do they're maybe a good coach, they're a good mortgage broker, whatever, but they're not business people. They right. don't understand marketing and sales or customer service or, you know, hiring, firing, culture, blah, blah, blah. They don't get any of this stuff. So 
me, I was excited because I came from a business family and I got all this stuff and, and I studied <laughs> business in university, right? I got I got myself, you know, an undergraduate and a postgraduate, a master's degree from wow. top university in the United States, the Georgetown University. I graduated magna cum laude and I was in international business and 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 policy. And so I came to help people. And and what I noticed was that good people you know, they got scared because they were like, oh my God, are they going to like me? Are they going to want to do business with me? Are they going to want to like, oh, you know, I hope they like me. I hope they like me. I hope they do business with me. I hope they, you know, but they didn't want to come across as pushy. So they they don't, they didn't push for the business. Now, I understand that because nobody wants to be pushed. Nobody wants to be sold. But the problem is they wouldn't go after business that they should go after. People uh-huh. they could help. People who needed their help. That's what I noticed. So they made less money. You know, they made 50000 instead of 200000 that they deserved to make. So I thought, well, look, I, I know how to help these people. But we got to get that word sales out of their, their kind of out of their way. Because right. nobody wants to be sold. Right? So Absolutely. I said, let's, let's look at sales, not look at sales, but look at service. You don't want to be sold. I'm sure you don't want to be sold, Kay, but I'm sure you love to be served by a caring person. Absolutely. Right? And, yes. Absolutely. Right. And, you know, we, we think the same, you and I, we, we, we come from a similar business and cultural background. And this was beautiful because um, here's what, 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 what came through these people. They didn't change anything else except how they looked at selling and they looked at selling a serving. And so they weren't like, oh, I'm going to be pushy. They were like, I'm going to be serving. This is someone's father's mother, someone's daughter, someone's son. I'm going to help them. You know, I'm going to make sure they succeed. I'm going to make sure that if they had a bad experience with someone else, they'll have a good experience with you. And that's how people double, triple, quadruple their income. That's what we were able to do for a lot of people, you know, um, there was one particular individual, uh, a woman, she had been in corporate training for a long time. Her first name was Diane. She's from Ottawa. She did well. She did okay. She was doing like 70000 a year in business. But she didn't want to push. She was one of these nice ladies. You know what I mean? Just a <laughs> nice lady. She's a bit older. She, you know, kind of like someone's mom. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. And, and you, you would just like go, oh my God, but but she wouldn't go after business she should go after because she says, I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to be pushy. I go, listen, what if you're coming from a service point of view? Yeah. That's all she shifted. And she shifted that. And over a four month period, she went from making about 70,000 a year to making about 350,000. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? But that, like, we're all people, we're all unity, we're all the same, we're all in business, we're all entrepreneurs, we want to be of service to people. And, you, you, you know, I want to be of service to my fellow entrepreneur, my fellow, you, you know, uh, consultant, my fellow coach, my fellow thought leader. I look at you as a thought leader. I'm a thought leader, you're a thought leader. I, I want you to make more money. Let's say you're making a hundred thousand pounds a year. You should be making a quarter million pounds a year, a half a million pounds a year, a million pounds a year. And I have uh, been fortunate to have figured out a way to help folks like you do that. That is amazing. Oh my goodness. So there's a lot there that you just mentioned and I've got so many questions for you, Nikki. <laughs> so this, that's, is amazing. That's you. <laughs> this is amazing stuff. Now, Okay, firstly, the question is, what does a thought leader mean? People hear this word, right? But what does it actually mean? What does it mean to you and your clients? Well, that's a great question, because a lot of people think maybe a thought leader is like an ivory tower professor from a university, (laughs) and they're a researcher. And what they do, it's not practical in the real world. So, you know, why why should I care about that? (laughs) Well, I I had the good fortune on my podcast yesterday to interview a true thought leader, Dr. Robert Cialdini, mm-hmm. the author of the book, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. And here's what he said to me is that thought leadership can't just be research. It also has to have a successful application in the world. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. 
thought leadership has to have a successful application in the world. It has to be ethical. So you yeah. got to do it in a way that is helpful to people, not just like, let me get all the money I can out of this situation, right? <laughs> and there's a good way to describe a thought leader as I mean it, okay? So let's draw a distinction between an expert and a thought leader. An expert is someone who knows something. Well, experts are a dime a dozen, right? A lot of people know stuff. Right. They don't really make a lot of money. <laughs> but a thought leader is someone who's known for knowing something. Thought right. leaders are rare and valuable because they're professionally famous for what they can do and assist people with. Another way to put it, and you know, is a an expert is like a cover band while a thought leader plays original music. Now, this isn't original to me. David Muir and Scott taught me this, but it's really good. So you want to be thinking of original things that can be helpful. You have to be useful to people if you're going to be a thought leader. And so I'll tell you a story of a, a client of mine, uh, another woman. Um, I'm going to call her Jill. That's okay. not her name, but I'm going to call her. Mm -hmm. So she was a naturopathic doctor, a doctor of natural medicine. Successful. She made six figures. Successful. But her father at the time was dying of brain cancer, geoblastoma, and he passed away a few months later. And she was daddy's girl, and she wanted to honor her dad, and she wanted to, like, she wanted to be a successful entrepreneur like him, right? So that was what she wanted to do. So very straightforwardly, she approached us and said, look, I need your help. And I said, okay, we can help you out. We'll show you how to do all this. And I said, so tell me, what do you do? Well, she says, I, I, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and I help people with their health. I can help them heal any health issue. I'm wow. like, yeah, no, <laughs> you sound like everybody else. Yeah. So let's help you narrow your message. And so we went through a process, and I'll, let me let me demonstrate this process for you, if you don't mind. I want to just show this to you because I've, I've I've outlined it. And first thing we did was, whoops, here we go. First thing we did was we had her go. Okay, what's the problem you solve? for people, because when you do that, you earn the right to make a profit. People, problems, profit. You solve acute problems for amazing people, you earn an awesome profit. That's your purpose. So we helped her figure that out, right? And, right. Um, then we said, we want you to go through another process. Who's your ideal client? And your ideal client are the people you get the best results for, that you enjoy working with the most, and they're the easiest to transact with, but they pay you the best. They're easy to deal with, right? Right. So for her, it was professional woman, married with children over the age of 40. Ah. And the problem they had is they were, their life was great in every way, except they didn't feel pretty or beautiful anymore. Oh, I see. They felt like they were getting old and fat and unattractive. And she was like, you can be just as attractive and beautiful at, in your 50s, 60s, 70s as you were in your 20s and 30s, 40s. Oh, amazing. And the message was, get your sexy back. Wow. And uh, anyways, in her first year, she doubled her income. In her second year, she doubled her income again. In her third year, she doubled her income again. She went from six figures a year to a six figure a month run rate. Wow. That is amazing. That is amazing. Now, Nikki, I mean, this is all really, really awesome stuff. I'm absolutely loving it, especially the fact that you come from a place of service as well. Right. And so you really want to get people results and that's exactly what you're doing. So when people come to you, what are the I guess the three most common mistakes that people are making that's help that's stopping them from moving forward and making um, a lot more money than they should be. Well, number one is they put the attention on themselves rather than on the client. 
in a sales situation, in a marketing situation, like things like I said before, I wonder if they're going to like me or they're going to do business with me. Instead of, I wonder what problem they're dealing with. I wonder how bad it is for them. I wonder if they know that I'm exactly the right person to help them solve this yesterday. Because when you take the attention off you and you put it on the other person, miracles become possible inside your business. Absolutely. The second one we already talked about, which is that people don't have thought leadership. They're just trying to be like everybody else. Well, yes. you can't do that. You need to be different. You mm -hmm. need to have a differentiating factor like my friend at Naturopathic Doctrine. I've got a and question for is, you on that. I've got a question on you for that before you get on to the third point, right? Now, I think there's a lot of confusion here. Maybe you can um, get us straight on this. There's certain people that say, you know what, just follow what everybody else is doing. They're doing it. It works. Just follow what they're doing, right? And then on the other hand, you've got people saying, no, you've got to be different. You've got to have something unique about you, right? So I think that's where the conflict is, right? So do we follow what everybody else is doing because it's working for them or do we go a different direction? If you try to be a second-rate version of someone else, there's already an original out there. Mm. Better to be a first-rate version of you. Right. Okay. All right. So there's no harm in doing something different and not following what all the successful people are doing already. Look, if you... Um, decided I want to be Joe Rogan. I'm going to call myself <laughs> Jill Rogan and Joe yeah. Rogan. Yeah. It's not going to work well for you because there's already a Joe Rogan. Wow. You need to be gay. Right. You're unique. And that's what you really need to do. Okay. So now, you can you to... learn strategies and tactics from people? Sure, of course you can. But your message has got to be uniquely yours. Right. Okay. All right. So that's a differentiator, right? Is your messaging shouldn't be like everybody else's. It needs to represent you, who you are, and the people you want to attract. 100%. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So what's point three then? So almost everybody in our industry undercharges. They don't value themselves uh -huh. properly. So, you know, when you undercharge, you're undervaluing yourself. People don't trust that what you're offering them is going to work for them as well. You know, like, um, let's just say you um, wanted to help me I don't know, grow my business to $2 million a year. And let's say that you came to me and, you, and you know, we chatted and I was like, okay, I love it. How are we going to do this? You said, well, Nikki, we're going to do this coaching, that coaching, the other coaching. I'm going to be with you every step of the way. You're never going to feel alone. I'm like, all right, that sounds great. Okay, what do you charge? And you said, oh, um, $500 a year. I go, Ooh. what? What? <laughs> Does she know what she's doing? Five hundred dollars right. a year? Like, that's crazy, right? That is crazy. Yes. You there's something called expectancy bias. When you pay more for something, you expect more from it. Mm. You, you know what I mean? You enjoy what you're doing with it more. Let me let me show you something, okay? Just real quick. Okay. I can find this. All right. So, all right, that's very good. This is a pen. This pen cost me $2 in the store. Yes. So a pen. This pen cost me $1,000. They both write. They write very well. Words will go on a page from this and from this. I can sign checks with this and I can sign checks with this. Right. Why did I pay a thousand dollars for this pen? Why do I use this pen all the time where it's outside on my desk and I had to dig this one out of my my bag? Expectancy bias. I expect this to be a better pen, so I use it more. Mm. It's more fun. It's 
It's a Mont Blanc, right? Right. This one is a uh, Anner. You follow what I'm trying to say over here? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, I see what you mean. So, the the higher um, the products or the services, the better quality you're getting, right? So it's like going yeah, to Target. That's the perception that you have, yeah. Right. So is that going to Target or going to shop to in Prada? Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. Awesome. 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 Now, Nikki, yeah. I know and, at this. And when point... you're hiring a coach, if you're hiring a coach that's charging you a hundred thousand dollars a year, mm. right, versus a coach that's charging you a thousand dollars a year, yeah. Well, you expect one that's charging you a hundred thousand dollars to deliver at a hundred thousand dollars. You with me? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, this is all really, really amazing stuff, Nikki. Now, I know at this point, Nikki, they're going, oh, my goodness, how do I learn more from Nikki? How do I how am I able to connect with him? So where can people go to learn more and to connect with you? Learn more. Go to Amazon and type in Nikki Baloo. All my books are there All my podcasts. That's the best way to learn more. Um, and it's, you know, the books you got to pay a bit of money for, but the podcasts are free to, um, connect with me. If you're a business owner, go to ecircleacademy.com forward slash appointment and get on my calendar. If you're interested in taking your business to the next level, your life to the next level, then we should jump on a phone call. Let's do it right away. And that's absolutely free. I offer something called a free success strategy call so let's do it amazing i love that now before we come to the end of this episode nikki do you have any last words to share with us believe in yourself and don't do it alone make sure you got a community a group of mentors don't do it alone because it doesn't work well to do it alone you got to have somebody take you by the hand and to get you to the next level. Everybody needs that. Me, you, everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely, guys. You know, this was such an epic episode, Nikki. Thank you so much. And all the links that Nikki mentioned will be in the show notes. So make sure you scroll down and grab those links. Go and connect with him. Go and learn from him. Check his books out, his podcasts out, everything. And reach out to Nikki because he will be able to help you take your business to the next level. Awesome, Nikki. Thank you for coming onto the show. It was awesome having you here. Thanks for listening to Make Your Mark podcast at www makeyourmarkpodcast.com make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get this and every other episode that comes out we have lots of great stuff coming so make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss it and thank you in advance for all the reviews and comments i appreciate it so much and i look forward to serving you in next week's episode